Hello and welcome to Video Graphics with Dr. Doris. I'm Eric Doris, and today we are going to learn how to use the blending tool and do basic blending with Adobe Illustrator. This is a three-part series and I know that once you get your fingers in there and start playing with this program you're just gonna love it. So let's get started. Okay now what we're gonna do is the columns and arches exercise and if you look at the handout you can see that it's um, again designed for a Macintosh but that's okay because we need to learn how to translate all right the first thing it does is it mentions making your guides you want to get out rulers so hit control R to get your rulers and by the way if you want to get quick access to the hand tool hold the space bar down on your keyboard and your cursor will become the hand tool and you can just grab your document and drag it down a bit and then release the space bar so remember that now we want to zero out our rulers go to the upper left hand corner and drag the zero lines to the upper left hand corner of the actual piece of paper and release now you get a zero there and a zero there yay now in this particular exercise you definitely want your rulers to be accurate because if they aren't it's gonna mess things up we're gonna do a lot of reflecting and control D in other words do it again um, and uh, if if anything's off it's gonna mess up your design so you wanna make sure that your, rul your rulers are set and you place your guides properly Okay, after we get out our rulers, it says click and hold inside of your ruler, blah, 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 to drag that. All right. Reach into the side ruler and drag a guide. <coughs> Excuse me. Go into the uh, top ruler and drag a guide about one-third of the way down from the top of the page. What I like to do for this is drag it down to about, um, <coughs> excuse me, about three. Now, we can't see a three there, but we do know that up here is a 2 and up there is a 4 so that big notch in the middle has got to be 3 uh, also it says reach into the side ruler and drag a guide to the very middle of the page which would be 4 and a quarter so we'll come up here and grab it and that's a 5 and that's 4 so that's got to be 4 and a half so that has got to be 4 and a quarter we go to four and a quarter because the page is eight and a half wide. All right. Use the pen tool and click on the center of the page where the guidelines meet. All right, so we'll get the pen tool, hit P, and we'll get right where those guidelines meet. Just click right there, just once. Don't do anything else, just click. Then click at the bottom right-hand corner of your page. So let's scroll down. And the bottom right hand corner would be right there, the, the bottom right hand corner of the printable area, not the document itself, but the printable area. And click. We've created uh, a path. We're going to do something neat with it though. It says hold down um, command, uh, what is that? command 5. What they really mean is control 5. Control 5 and that will turn that path into a guideline that path is now a guideline so control 5 makes it a guideline now it has to be selected in order for that to work alright all guidelines automatically lock the un to unlock guides look under view at the top and drag down and click where it is where it says uh, guides unlock guides you can deselect that but we're not doing that right now um, so don't forget them after the changes are made all right, the first thing we're gonna do now that we've got our guide set up is we're gonna create the floor of our columns and arches scene. Select the rectangle tool. So we'll go over here and select the rectangle tool. Okay, um, now click and drag and let up at the bottom right hand corner in the dialog box, uh, type in one and one fourth width. Okay, just all you need to do is just click and this will pop up okay and in the dialog box type in 
1.25 for width. 1.25. And for the height, I believe it's just one. Yeah, just one. And hit OK. OK, now you've got a rectangle. It has a white fill and a black stroke. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this thing and drag it down to the lower right hand corner and just place it in the lower right hand corner, just like that. Okay, uh, choose the open arrow tool, which is the white arrow tool, and click in an empty area because we want to deselect this thing. So white arrow tool, the quick key command is A, and click away. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to um, skew, manually skew this rectangle, but we want to maintain the height. We're going to go right up to the top line and just drag to the left, but maintain the height. And we're going to line up the edge of that rectangle with that guideline. And there we go. Pretty easy. Uh, now we're going to, okay, select the black arrow tool and click on the rectangle and select to select all anchor, anchor points. So we can hit uh, V to get the selection tool and just click right on the rectangle. Okay, all of the anchor points are now selected. All right, uh, select the reflect tool and place the cursor right in the middle of the page on the guideline at about the same height as the middle of this rectangle. So let's go to the reflect tool. It shares the button with the rotation tool. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our cursor right there on that guideline at about mid-level with the rectangle. Okay, and click, okay, let's see, uh, select the, okay, hold down the Alt key and click. So hold down the Alt key and click right there. And what's going to happen is this dialog box for the reflect tool pops up and it asks you, okay, how do you want to reflect this thing? We've already told it where we want our axis to be. This will be the middle between this rectangle and the copy that we're going to send. We're going to do a vertical, and we can even preview it. That's where it's going to go. It's going to go from there to there, but we're going to make a copy. So hit copy, and there is your reflection. And you've reflected a copy of the rectangle. All right. Now what we're going to do is um, we're going to uh, select both boxes by uh, selecting the black arrow tool. So hit V to get your black arrow tool. Hold the shift key down and select the other rectangle. All right. Uh, let's see. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, a series of tiles, like a yellow brick road or something, uh, by using the blend tool. We're going to select the blend tool. And while those two are selected, and we're going to select specified steps and let's uh, let's see how many do we want in there uh, I, I, as I recall three is the best for that so let's hit three and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna click on similar anchor points here and here okay what happened was three tiles were automatically created in between the two. Now let me show you what would happen if I did that the wrong way. You could get the tiles rolling if you clicked on the two inner tiles. See, that's not what you want. Control Z. What you want is to click on the same place on each tile. And that way you get a nice blend of three. Okay, now what we're going to do is reflect, uh, actually we're going to create a scaled down copy of these by selecting the scale tool. And we're going to go right up to here because this is the, the direction that we're going to want the scale to go in, uh, scaled down copy to go. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, let's see, next we will repeat the row of tiles. Oh, select the blend tool, blah, 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 okay. Uh, repeat this row of tiles towards the vanishing point. Go to the scale tool, then place the cursor at the vanishing point. That's where these two meet. And let's see. 
I haven't done this exercise in so long, I've forgotten how to do it. Uh, all right, put it right where the vanishing point is, hold the Alt key down, and click, like so. And it says, what do you want here? Well, we're going to go with a universal, a uniform scale, but it's going to be smaller. It's going to be at 85%. So hit 85 and hit copy. Oh, look at that. All right, now here's where we get to do some cool stuff like we did with the uh, uh, spiral. Hold the control key down and hit D. And what it does is it doesn't duplicate, it does it again. D, 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 all the way to the vanishing point. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. Dude, it just goes on forever. <laughs> All right, now, one thing you can do is if you want to fill these with uh, some kind of color, get your magic wand tool and click and I should have selected all of them. Why didn't it do that? Hmm, not good. I learn something every day. Now if I want, I can go all the way back and I can actually start over again by giving these a color fill. Now remember you can't blend gradiented uh, objects. You'll lose the gradient. But I do want these to have some color. So um, I'm going to deselect. I'm going to click on this one and just give it a, a nice, oh let's say yellow and select this one and give it a blue okay now I'm gonna do the blend over again click here oops All right. the blend over again click where is it okay there and there Oop, didn't work Control Z. okay didn't have it quite There we go. All right. And there's my blend. I'm going to get the scale tool again. Hold the Alt key down and click right there. I want an 85% scale down copy towards the vanishing point. And then I'll just keep doing it again. It's a rainbow. There you go. All right. Well, that's that first part taken care of. Okay, well, that is the end of the part one of uh, basic blending with Adobe Illustrator. We're going to go on to part two now, okay? All right, let's, let's do this.